Hello! Welcome to another edition of uh, EDH Randomizer. This is a, a series where I go on EDH Rec, I hit random, and whatever uh, commander it gives me, I brainstorm on how to make a deck around it. So, again, the rules I set, the deck cannot have more than 500 listed, and... Now, when I said about in episode 1 about not using commander staples, it's not that I'm not using them, I'm just not talking about them. Because, right, some of them... <coughs> some of them just go... Most of them just go without saying. So, let's, uh... <laughs> oh, goody. Alright, so today we've got Grandmother Senjir. For 4 and a black, we have a 3-3 three, three legendary human wizard. With the ability, one and a black, tap, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Okay, so upon, so looking at that, looking at that off the hop. <laughs> see, any of these creatures that have targeting effects, my automatic, um, my automatic include every time is glaring spotlight. Because you want to be able to be able to target things. So glaring spotlight just helps you do that. And the great part about glaring spotlight is that I forgot to mention in the first episode is glaring spotlight for three you can sacrifice it in creatures you control gain hex proof until end of turn and are unblockable. So, you can use it to protect your own board. And that's what makes it really good. Glaring Spotlight is probably one of my favorite cards. It's definitely a pet card. Um, so, so we're looking... So, Grandmother Sangir. Yeah, so tap one and a black for that. So, you want... Yeah, you want to be able to use that ability a lot. So, you want your general... Um, Mono black mana amplifiers. So Crypt Gas, Nurkana Revenant, Mages of the Coffers, Cabal, the whole Cabal Coffers, Urborg thing. You want those for this. You could also include Cabal Stronghold. In any black deck, you want these cards because it just amplifies the amount of mana you can pump out. She's a five cost for a 3-3, three, three, similar to Sunshay was. And for that reason, you want to get her out as fast as possible. So you can run uh, Jet Medallion. There was a card that... So I want to give a shout out to uh, the Man Explained podcast. He put me on to a card earlier that I never heard about until now. And that's called Semblance Anvil. So let's look that up here. So Semblance Anvil. So when it enters a battlefield, you may exile a non-land card from your hand. Spells you cast that share a card type with the exiled card cost two less to cast. So that's really good. That's a really good card for this purpose. So we're gonna include it. So we're going to include Ambl Semblance Anvil, because it's not like you're never going to have um, creatures, right? So we'll include our, some more obvious ones like Solemn, oops, um, Dread Presence is a really good one. It's the one where Swamp enters, you can do stuff with it. So what do we have? We had three of the black cards so we'll add 35 swamps um okay let's go back to grandma for a second here so one of the black tap her target creature gets minus one minus one you can see and the thing about this is is depending on where your mana is by the time you cast her you may or may not be able to do this the turn she comes out so having some Swifties wouldn't be a bad idea. 
for the greaves. Not even, to, not even necessarily for the protection, <clears throat> but just for the haste enabling, because there's really not much haste enabling in black. Uh, you want to be able to untap her, so Thousand Year Elixir is good. There's another one that's not coming to mind right now. Uh, untap. So what do we got? We got high synergy cards. So we got Dark Blast, Suffocating Fumes, Tooth Collector. Cabal Torturer. So it's a bunch of things that give ne like minus one, minus one. Wither, yeah. Oh yeah, so we definitely want Dark Ritual and Charcoal Diamond. We want an Arcane Signet, Sol Ring combo. It's not a combo, but might as well be. Let's see. Tragic Slip, Cage Sun, Feed the Swarm, Solemn, Grim Harispex, Gary. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of mono black um, staples. Critic, Sacrifice a Creature, Do Some Stuff, Drana, Zulaport Cutthroat. See, and the great the great part about this ability, I should probably go back to her. Where'd you go? Great thing about this ability is that it bypasses indestructible you can kill indestructible creatures with that um for the fact that it's a target i think is that what i want no i can never spell the name right oh i did have it right Harobi death's whale whenever a creature becomes a spell target of a spell or ability just flat out destroy it so that can be really good in the sense of you can just target with her ability and it just kills them so that's that's pretty good to go with that um yeah we definitely want we always want cage sun monocolored decks uh, what do we got? Rabbit Rats, Bog Brew Witch, Blood Artist, Thought Picker Witch, Festering Goblin. When it dies, minus one, minus one. I mean, Massacre Girl, like OG Massacre Girl, could be good for that. What about new Massacre Girl? Would she, would she work for this? Masker Girl, Known Killer. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if its toughness was less than one, draw a card. Creatures you control with her. Yes. Yes. Both. Both is, both are very good. I like that. I really like that. Uh, another include for this is Kuro. Yeah, Kuro Pit Lord. He does a similar effect. Um, you, know, you want to be able to untap her. Puppet strings. Tap her untap target creature. I think that's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> See, we got puppet strings. That we could ride, yeah. Staff of Dom is never bad. Staff of Steve. See, and the problem we we're not in blue, so I can't run Intruder Alarm. Uh, Umbral Mantle, yes, definitely. Umbral Mantle. Untap target creature that has an activated ability with tap in its cost. Mage Right Stone, yeah. That works. Um, now, with all these artifacts, Voltaic Key might be a good idea. Because so far we've got Manifold Key, Puppet Strings, Mage Right Stone, and Thousand Year Elixir. On staff of domination, 
which can untap itself. We need to figure out some creatures here. <laughs> um, well, Cabal Torturer kind of works similarly. So three drop. Tap a black. So it's it kind of does what Grandmother Sendier does, but better because it's one mana less. And threshold, you can do more. So I don't hate that. Um, I really like the idea of the new Massacre Girl's ability. What do we got for her? Enters the battlefield. Dies. Dark creature gets minus X, minus X. Can't be countered. Tarion Soul Cleaver. Eh. Whenever a creature in opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. Mask of Worm. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I think we'll include Zulaport Cutthroat amongst that as well. I can see I could include Blood Artist, but I've kind of fallen out of favor with that. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had a negative one, negative one counter on it. No, we're not dealing with counters here. Wither. Oh yeah, because she's giving it Wither. Um, I mean... I don't know. I think Tragic Slip is a good idea. Tragic Slip is always a good idea. Uh, Defile, yeah. Jet Medallion, I included that. S sudden Spoiling. Su I love Sudden Spoiling. And especially because if you turn everything into one, one zero twos. Oh, okay. Well, still. <laughs> Um, Caravec the Spiteful. Oh, I never knew Caravec got a reprint. <laughs> and they made him. Eh. <laughs> Sir Conrad. Mm, we could. I don't think Sir Conrad's a bad idea. What am I saying? Sir Conrad's never a bad idea. <laughs> I love Sir Conrad. Um, let's go back here. We got Dark Blast. Minus one, minus one. You can dredge for it, which... Eh. Uh, Plague Dogs. Plague Dogs put into a graveyard from play. All creatures get minus one, minus one to one a turn. Pay two, sack it, draw a card. That's not bad. I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. Um, yeah, Grandmother Sengir's ability is really, <laughs> really straightforward. Um, what is she again? She's a human wizard. Uh, there's not really much in black that um, does anything with lizards. Uh, Shambling Ghast. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do that. So, I think... All in all, I think what we're looking at here... Is you want... You want to be spreading around... Minus one, minus one. Um... Well, they're not counters, but... You know what I mean? You definitely want to be spreading around the minus one, minus one abilities um i think adding hirobi to this definitely helps oh yeah the monuments duh and i totally forgot about that in sanche as well you can add kefnets to the monument all the monuments do that crap <laughs> uh greed honorable dreams yeah bajukabog Coffers, Rogue's Passage. I don't. Well, you could add roads. You could add passages that make make you uh, make creatures unblockable. But at the same time, 
part of the point of this is um, you're not really attacking per se you're essentially trying to kill off the board but I think Hirobi is a really good addition to this because like yeah because Grandmother Singear and a lot of these minus one minus one effects bypass uh, indestructible so if you were to target an indestructible creature with Grandmother Sengir, Hirobi's ability goes on the stack. But because it's indestructible, it just won't die. But the ability still resolves because that creature doesn't die. So you're still applying minus one, minus one. But Hirobi itself is really good because um, if the thing doesn't have indestructible, then it's just dying. Now, yeah, we included Glaring Spotlight to get around Hexproof. We should also think of, um, yeah, because getting around Hexproof is good, and then giving ourselves Hexproof is good too, which is why, like, Swift of Boots and stuff works in that regard. Thornbite Staff. Yes, equipped creature has two tap. This creature deals one damage, and whenever creature is put to a graveyard from play, untap this creature. That is what we want. That that is the spice that we want. Because if you have Thornbite Staff attached to Grandmother Sangir, and you have Hirobi on the field, it kind of works similar to I think it's Goblin Sharpshooter. You just throw it. You just throw that damage around. Yeah, I, Thornbite Staff is definitely good for that. I forgot that card even existed. <laughs> so that's really good for that. So, yeah, I think we kind of got the... Uh, we kind of got the gist for this. Um, I could run stuff in here to give creatures uh, Death Touch, but... Minus one, minus one is not damage, so Death Touch won't take effect. So there's no point in doing that. It's, uh, yeah. The only way Death Touch would be really useful is if, like with Thornbite Staff, <clears throat> Thornbite Staff can deal, can tap to deal damage. So that would apply. So I think. There's lots of things in here that can give Death Touch, but I think Basilisk Collar might be a good idea. It's also a really good idea to just give something Death Touch in case they want to try and pull combat tricks. And you can just be like, no, <laughs> I'll block your shit. Uh, but there's not really much in Mono Black that taps to just deal damage. Uh, Mutilate is good, yep. Mutilate... Feed the Swarm is always great. Like, there's not... There's not... Yeah, there's not much in black that just... Deals... X... Damage. It's usually... Minus... Or... Like... Dread Presence deals damage. So if you put... Say, Basilisk Collar on Dread Presence... Or if you put... Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to tap to do it. But say you put Basilisk Collar on Dread Presence, drop a Swamp in and kill something, right? Like that's that's super good. Uh, Shambling Goblin dies. Target eh. dies. See, has a lot of die stuff. Um, Drana is really good for this. Yeah, definitely. I uh, I run her in another deck. And she can get really fun. Uh, Sangromancer. Critic. For each black and a cost, you may pay two life. I'm not running a lot of things that are really black pip heavy.
per se. Like, I think the heaviest black pip card I'm running is Kuro. And that's because he's a bloody 9-drop. <laughs> uh, fungal Infection, Village Rights, Infernal Grasp, that's the other one I wanted. Yeah, like, there's not a lot of stuff in black that just deal damage. It's usually just kill it or give it minus whatever. Make obsolete is really good. It's fester gloom. Non black creatures get minus one. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it doesn't affect your stuff. But if someone else is playing black then but it's whatever. Like Cower in Fear is good for that, yeah. Dread of Night, all white creatures get minus one, minus one. That, I like that. Because that's the enchantment. That's a static effect. Okay, so I think, <clears throat> I think we got the gist. It's pretty much, you want to be able to untap, uh, Grandmother Sengir as often as you can. You want to be able to abuse her ability, you want to be able to do it as soon as she comes out, and you want to do, you, you know, you want to take advantage of being able to target things. So, it's a little, this is a little bit tougher of a commander to kind of work with, but it there's still stuff you can do with it. I think the new Masker Girl is a really good fit for this kind of build because by the time the creature's dying, it has zero toughness. That's how the minus one minus one works, right? So I think I'm going to keep... I'll post the finished uh, deck list to this on Moxfield in the description. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing these kinds of videos. If you are too, please let me know. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. But uh, yeah, without further ado, I bid thee farewell.